All righty, let's talk about quiet quitting. Quiet quitting is, uh, in my opinion, absolutely stupid. If you do it, I think you're making a bad decision, but I'll tell you why. According to this study or information from Gallup, 50% of the workforce are quiet quitters. <laughs> I believe it from what I've seen in the workforce. 32% are actively engaged workers and 18% are actively disengaged. Now, according to this little graph that they have from a few years ago, and this was published in 23, but it's from 2022. At 2000, actively disengaged was 18, and it's gone back up to 18 now. So it did drop to 13, now it's gone to 18. Actively engaged was 26, it's now 32, but it was as high as 36. And that was a over 10-year trend. That was a 10-year trend before it started to go down. So this trend was trending up, but of course, you know, we had the BS19 issue. And of course, that changed everyone's perception. So on top of the great resignation, the quiet quitters, the minimum Mondays, we now have the push for the 32-hour work week. And lots of media are starting to talk about this, getting the idea into people's heads that they should have a 32-hour work week and not strive to work for 40 hours a week. The problem with that is this. The boss isn't going to take a reduction in productivity, which means for every four workers who decide they want a 32 hour week from 40, the boss could employ another worker to cover those shifts at 32 hours a week. So the boss's staff outgoing will still be the same. All those people still need to eat. So the money that they spend on living will go back into society that will be the same so that won't change society won't be detrimentally affected by people choosing to have 32 hours a week week but the person who will be affected is the one who's doing it the one who's decided they earn 200 dollars a day they work five days a week they make a thousand dollars i'm going to work four days a week instead and make 800 dollars they're going to take a $200 a week drop in their pay and think that's fantastic. They need work-life balance. 100,000 years ago when we were hunter and gatherers, we didn't have work-life balance. We didn't have quiet quitting. Sorry, love, my mate. Um, only going to hunt one rabbit a day for four days a week. Uh, absolute minimum. We eat one rabbit a day between us. So one rabbit a day is all we need. Absolute minimum. And I need work-life balance or hunt-life balance. So, um, yeah, I'm only going to hunt four days a week. And your mate's like, well, you know, I need, I need um, gathering life balance. So I'm only going to gather fruits, nuts, and berries for four days a week as well. And each time I do, it's only going to be what we absolutely eat that day. So for three days a week, we'll just starve. Yeah, sounds good. Yes, no, no. Every day of the week, you get up. Get off your butt, you go hunting, you go collecting the food because that's what you had to do to survive. Today in our modern day and age, people have been convinced of this mythical work-life balance that they need to have and that they need to have increasing amounts of this work-life balance. And they've also been encouraged to spend their off time actively spending the money that they earned in their on time. What does that do? It keeps them poorer than they need to be. If you jettison $200 a week from your income, you've got bills to pay. They don't change. In fact, they only ever go up. Then it's going to be harder for you to borrow money. And I'm not suggesting you do, but it will be harder. And then it's also harder to pay back loans you already do have. And the other thing it does is Listen to the people who are encouraging you to do this. Do they suffer? If you do this, do they suffer? And the answer is no. The boss won't suffer. The person selling you the book, How Wonderful Quiet Quitting Is, they don't suffer. In fact, that's how they make their money. They need to convince you it's a great idea, otherwise you won't buy their book. You won't attend their little TED Talk or seminar or what the fuck ever. And the other wealthy people who are encouraging you to do it, well, they're always playing king of the castle. If they can encourage more people not to play king of the castle, that's better for them. They'll stay king of the castle 
and you stupid little poor plebs will never get up there. Plus, not only will you not get up there, you'll be far easily controlled. $200,000 in the bank and the boss says take a jab and you'll say, Go, how's your fuck sound? You'll, you'll lose your job. Yeah, I've got 200000 in the bank. What are you going to do? Right? And then everyone can do that. And then the boss is like, well, shit, I'll have no staff. You better come to work. But then they'll say, fine, you won't work. I'll import some people from a country where there's no money. In other words, that's that should be a sign to you. They're actively using that concept of money and the request and the, the desire for it to manipulate you into doing things. So don't be a quiet quitter. Don't be a minimum Monday. Don't be a 32 hour week person. Don't get into extraneous debt. Don't spend all your money in activities on your days off. Put it in the bank. Start saving that money for a rainy day. At least three months minimum expenses. That's what you need to have in the bank. If you don't have that in the bank, you need to actively work to have that in the bank so that if something happens, at least you can survive for three months. But hey, I could be wrong. I think quiet quitting is the most idiotic thing there is because they're the first people to go when it's financially prudent to lay off staff. But if you don't ask permission to shine, you try to be the best that you can be at what you do for a living, whatever that is, that's when you'll start to get ahead. But that takes a shift in your mentality. Well, let me know what you think down below.